I make a motion to open the meeting. Is there a second, please? No second. Roll call. Trustee Lakin. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, does any board member have a disclosure regarding any uh, any item on the agenda tonight? I do not. I do not. I do not. Okay. Um, oh, just a note. Uh, please silence your cell phones. I always forget to do that. So. Um, okay. Could the cl uh, deputy clerk please read the open meeting compliance certification? That's the guidelines for public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the public will have opportunity to comment on specific agenda items when they occur in the meeting and also on general matters at the end of the meeting. Speakers can comment once in each comment window if it is on a specific agenda item. It is, it is not a debate, a deposition, or a panel discussion. Speakers must step to the front of the room if physically able. Alternatively, they may provide comment comments from where they are seated. If an attendee is participating Participating via web conference technology, such as Zoom, the clerk will announce how attendees should signal that they wish to comment. This may differ by platform, but it is typically accomplished through the raised hand feature. Speakers must give their name, address, and organization. There shall be an exemption for any category of people protected by New York State law. Speakers must be recognized by the presiding officer. Speakers must limit their remarks to three minutes on a given topic. Speakers may not yield any remaining time they may have, have to another speaker. Board members may, with the permission of the mayor, only interrupt a speaker during their remarks for the purpose of clarification or information. Speakers must observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, and good taste. Interested parties or their representatives may address the board by written communication to villageclerk at villageofpittsburgh.com. All written communications will become part of the public record and will be attached to the minutes for that meeting. At the center's request, written communications will be read aloud by the clerk at the meeting and will adhere to the three-minute time limit. If printed materials or other media are provided by attendees during the meeting, they must be submitted to the village board with optional distribution to audience members. All materials will be part of the public record. Private distribution of materials to audience members only is prohibited. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's start in here with uh, department reports. Uh, first up, building inspector, please. You all have a copy of Steve's report. Did anybody have any, any questions regarding his report? Um. Yeah. I, I just did have one follow-up question actually about an item that came up at the last meeting. Uh, Steve, did you have a chance to run the report of the, um, the fire inspections in the village? I think we had talked about I mean, I, I had given the mayor a copy of where I was at, and, you know, like I said, I was at two-thirds already, you know what I mean, of, of the report. So and then I've got, I've been starting to do the, do a now for the fall. Okay, so I, at the last meeting, my understanding is that you were going to print out using the, the software system that we have to, to manage and, and record the, the fire inspections of buildings, that we would basically just get a printout of the uh, the commercial buildings. That Why don't we just forward it to the board? Yeah, we'll just do that. Yeah, yeah, that was I, my I didn't, I didn't realize it, but I will. Just yeah, let's just forward it to everybody. Right. Yeah, because, you know, it's sort of a roll, rolling inspections. Yeah. That's really what happened. What I, I told the mayor today, yeah. kind of in a, in a follow-up today, I, I spent the time now to go for every business and get a contact number for every business in the village. Yeah, because some things I have changed. I actually completed that today. Okay. So that's great. We'll have an internal, you know, record, which is wonderful. Yeah. Any other questions for, for Steve? And um, I know we have down as item number five is the um, village hall roof, but I'd rather just talk about it now because you're here, you know, about where we are with the roof and what, what is needed because I know you've been speaking, you know, with the roofers. All right. And also, um, you, Jack and I had, had been out, got up on the roof and, and took a look because we um, noticed some bubbles. And it's progressively getting worse on the flat roof um, section of the building. Um, it's a roll roofing, uh, granular roll roofing. So I've taken to contacting different contractors. Um, I've only had two so far that gave estimates mm -hmm. to replace the flat roof area of the roof. Um, it's 25 years old. There's, I mean, very large bubbles in the roof and are cracking. Um, and it's compromising some of the seams you were saying? The seams are separating because the bubbles are so high. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, 
How many, because uh, I haven't been up there, so how many schemes are there? There's 35 or 40 schemes. On okay, okay. Um, and I'd say at least 50% of them are, have bubbles in them now. Okay. If not more. And then, and then you also, I know you, there was a report that was done like 22 years ago by Bureau yeah. that had done a whole assessment over the building. And yeah. so I, you were able to reach out, I think, to somebody there? Yeah, I got uh, Jen from Barrow coming on Tuesday to, to take a look Just at it. Just take a too. look as well. Okay. Um, but you say it's, we are going to have a problem. It's cracking in place. It's acting verified that we were up there the other mm -hmm. day. And, um, and we're going to have to leave here probably this winter because some of these seems are separated. Okay. Um, as soon as you get pressure on there because the bubbles are, I mean, high. I mean, you got bubbles that are sticking up off the roof. There is so with snow and... As soon as the, the pressure goes, it's got, it's got to do something. Okay. You know, it's got, something's got to get. Okay. Um, so the choice would be to, to do another roll roof or tear off and do another roll roofing. Um, Albert Davis, uh, the gentleman was up there, I found to be very knowledgeable and, and not wanting to go through and tear it all off, mm -hmm. but to leave that there and then actually apply it over the top of that. Is that like a membrane? Uh, a membrane, okay. um, which would be a 20 year warranty versus um, the last one we got, which okay. would be a 10 year warranty. Sorry, so you're actually going to just cover over the existing, is it EPD, uh, EPDM? Yeah, or it's not, you would cover over with an EPDM, they would cover over with sheet goods, three quarter sheet goods, and then put a brand new EPDM over the whole thing. So up there so now, like I said, it's a, it's a roll roof and granular. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's 25 years old, and, and a majority of the stones are gone. Mm -hmm. So and I, I asked him about what will we patch it, and silver coating goes, yeah, might last a year. You know, so you, you well, could, I don't want to compromise the band. Yeah, well, you could band aid it, but you're going to the look, you're going to spend good money over bad or bad mm -hmm. money over good. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, before we have an issue, it would be smarter to have it taken care of. So, oh, yeah, go ahead. um, if so, you said that this roof is about 20 years old. Uh, 20 this part of the flat roof is, is all yeah. we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, 25 years old? Yeah. And, and I imagine that's probably close to the lifespan that's expected for these roofing materials, is it? Pardon? What is the lifespan that's expected for these roofing materials? I would imagine it's less yeah. than that. The roll roofing, you know, we've grown 15 to 20. Yeah. We've, we've done very well to get 25 years out of roll roofing. So I, my, my concern here is that I know that we've got a, the rest of the roof is copper, which is pretty distinctive and expensive. Yeah, and that, was, that was, that was right. repaired a number of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not about that. Yeah. So I, I just like to make sure that, you know, if, if Barrow is involved, could we have Barrow look at the, um, the quotes that we've gotten to and just make sure that, you know, we're, we're going with a vendor that knows how to integrate mm -hmm. with that, uh, mm -hmm. that type of roof and, and everything yeah. before we. Yeah. yeah. Isn't Dr. That the, Davis has been around since the 30s. Yeah, 1936, I think, is when they said that they were, yeah. 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 Did you have anything to add? No. Yes, Bob. Okay, if it's a modified... Uh, name and address, please. Robert the... Corby, 7 Washington Avenue. It's a modified ditch in the roof. Mm -hmm. um, we repaired it. We, while I was mayor, we hired Bureau Architecture to do a, a condition report on the building, setting priorities for mm -hmm. maintenance and repairs, which we followed while I was mayor. Mm -hmm. Uh, normally, a uh, modified bitumen roof has a 35 to 40 year lifespan mm -hmm. that was still in good shape when I was still there. Mm -hmm. I hadn't looked at it obviously mm -hmm. since that time. I highly recommend you talk to Dean Searle because as a member of our preservation board, she was also a project architect for the project who oversaw um, both phases of uh, the project. There was an initial project and then the contractor changed and some of the work wasn't properly done so we had to repair that. The critical <laughs> issue here is the copper roof and the edge details mm -hmm. because copper if you if you subject it to asphalt or certain other products that are used in the roofing industry uh, the acid will eat through the copper and compromise the roof. Based on uh, current labor and materials the roof the replacement value of that total roof is going to be close to two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So, I would spend the time. I would hire Bureau Architecture to write specific specifications. That is both the modified bitumen roof and the copper roof constitute archaic building materials. They really are the regional expert in that, and that will protect the long-term investment that was made twenty-seven years ago. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Yeah, um, I, maybe maybe you missed that part. We're already having bureau coming out. The principal's coming out. Yeah, we'll get. So we're, we're, we're following up. So appreciate appreciate well, your input. Specifications, so you yep. don't get an answer. Yeah. Understood. Comparison. Thanks so much. Thanks for your input. Appreciate that. Anything else for C? Okay. Thank you. Next up. Hi, Jeff. Uh, DPW report. Any other comments for, regarding the DPW report? Uh, Zach? Questions? It's been busy. Yeah. If you guys don't have any questions. Um, you know what? I just, I, let's just talk about the streetlights really quickly because that has just been so problematic, uh, particularly down at the end of South Main where it's been kind of in the dark for a long time. Yeah. And now there's a few that are up and running, actually. Uh, well, the, the one on that the, was missing ahead now has a right. lighthouse. Um, but the, 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 the widespread outage still exists. Yeah. That, that has yeah, not like changed. Yeah, by you. <clears throat> um, a few weeks ago we met with uh, representatives of our g and &E, um, one person is a street lady, uh, Coordinator and uh, two others who are uh, public and community outreach uh, specialists. Mm -hmm. uh, title. Yeah. Government relations. Yeah. yeah. So um, we had asked them to uh, put something together to submit to the public to let them know what is going on with the streetlights and that they are, in fact, being investigated and worked on trying to be re energized uh, all those outages will. Yeah, they're, but, they're deep diving though because it's a whole section, it's a whole run. Yeah. There's something else going on. You know, ancient, yeah. ancient wiring. Um, yeah. So they're just trying to diagnose where the fault is. Could be a chipmunk. Who <laughs> knows? Yeah. yeah. But they're working on it and, uh, you know, it's their old lights. So we're, we're trying to, you know, get them, get them put together. Okay. And then you all saw the report by Josh Galili on, you know, the pruning of the, the oak and just kind of where we're at, you know. And his recommendation moving forward with the tree as it exists, uh, periodically inspecting it and then, yeah. um, you know, whatever is recommend, recommended. Sort of making the assessments yeah. going forward, you know, so. <laughs> Yes, Bob. Are any uh, street trees going to be planted this fall because the urban forestry program, uh, which I initiated as mayor, um, there's been a number of trees that of course have been taken out and the absence and the missing trees are now becoming visually prominent on our streetscapes. And yes, trees are going to be planted. Trees so far as mayor, I just wondered if yeah. you schedule. And my yes. second follow-up yeah. question to that is the <coughs> In the, the tree inventory mm -hmm. that was maintained while I was there has that been kept up to date. Yeah, why don't you speak to that? Because yeah, the last couple weeks, um, there's a lot of detail that's kind of unorganized in that uh, inventory, so we're going through and, and verifying everything in the field um, before we're reaching it to uh, the GIS person in town to put everything back uh, correctly into the spreadsheet and update the maps. Um, at that point, we will be reassessing all the areas that are missing trees, uh, village roads, um, and whatever is left over that the state does not replace in the areas where trees have come down um, to get a suitable tree for those areas. And um, also, I know you want to speak about the paving, the contracts as well. Yep. Why don't we touch on that and talk, talk through that. One more tree question. Oh, another tree. You just mentioned yeah. that on village streets, um, but we had a lot of them taken down <clears throat> on uh, DOT, uh, in DOT right-of-ways. And you just mentioned that they might be replacing some of those, but yes, some they are. Um, so can you speak to that? DOT took down 12 trees. Actually, two more just came down. They're hunting locusts down by Washington and uh, the North Bend Street State to accommodate the new signal pole. Um, but they said that they're going to be replacing 15 trees uh, on the state roads. Yeah. The, the, and they're, they're, they're replacing them with natives. I believe. Yeah. Natives, um, they've given us a little bit of uh, room for picking and choosing what we want. Um, yeah, they just sent the list. Of okay. And yeah. areas yeah. that we had trees mm -hmm. taken down uh, due to RG&E coming through and, and trimming around power lines, uh, they're putting some back in those places as well. Yeah. And what's so, the whole timeline on that? Are they coming well, this they, fall or is it? Is yeah, it so they actually just submitted a uh, state of request for mm -hmm. planting of these trees. So awesome. within the next 10 days, there should be trees in the ground. Okay. Yeah, and just, just to kind of, you know, bring everybody up to speed, they're absolutely crawling over this village. Yeah. I think, what did you say, 70? 
Yeah, the, uh, the the 70, Cold Springs has 70 uh, workers right now. Yeah. And for a while, but for, now they're doing night work mostly. Right. Um, but for about a week and a half, every corner has their own work on it, which is, you know, if they had this one in the this probably I would, I would, would yeah, yeah, it would have been close to time for yeah. sure. Yeah. But as of now, it's, it's going to carry through this spring. I think they have a completion date of April 30th. Before the PGA. Just before the PGA. <laughs> yes. Yep. They're keenly aware of that. Yeah. I know. I know. And um, the, I know for the, the night paving, the milling and paving, they put on two crews, not yeah. just one. Yeah, they have a, a, um, a milling crew and a paving crew coming mm -hmm. from uh, the north, working their way south. They started at St. John Fisher. Now you can see they come up into the, the village um, with just the, the southbound lane at this point. They might be working on the, uh, the northbound uh, tonight. Um, and then another crew starting at 490 working west yeah. in the village, so I'm 31. Um, yeah. Pretty good. As you can see, yeah. East Dallas, you know, got its, its binder yeah. coat down and just wait on the top. To yeah. Control. And then they had the rain today, too. Yeah, so rain I know. Off a little bit, but yeah. everything is still out there. Still, yeah. middle, middle in the rain, you just can't pay, so yeah. maybe plug it away. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yes, Dave. Hi, uh, Dave Marshall, 67 South Main. Um, just a quick thank you, Zach, to the crew for helping out with uh, Paula Sherwood's gar Paula Sherwood's garden. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the kids and I and Maria couldn't mm -hmm. quite finish. We tried to. We were out of town for a little bit, but it looks real nice. So I just wanted to say thanks for that. And so thanks for your help on that. But yeah, also, if you're going to be working on something like that, can you notify Village Hall? That's just as a matter. Did. You did. Yeah, okay. I, I wasn't. No, we were. I wasn't aware. So I was just concerned. Well, he said we we're good. Okay. I just. Yeah. Yep. So we're good. Just so we know, yeah, what you're working on our property. Okay, great. Well, that's wonderful because yeah. we're going to be planting a lot of bulbs. Sweet. Hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're just a little short staffed. Uh, we don't have a garden yet, so yeah. <laughs> we're trying to get all the light poles um, painted right now. We, we're, Peter's been working on that for he the has last been chipping two and a half away. weeks or so, and he's he's got the uh, the south side of State Street, um, the east side of South Main Street, Dillon, except for one pole, which is right in the middle of the construction area. Um, and he's starting to work on the other side of South Main Street now, so it shouldn't be too much longer until we have it painted. I don't know if anybody's noticed. Uh, yeah. But, uh, um, and then, yeah, we plug away getting the weeding done in between, so we have the rose beds cleaned out um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. so we can um, a lot more room, but um, that uh, the median on, on North Main Street next yeah. door, as soon as the construction is you know, kind of out of the way, we're going to the Washington. Great. And then we're going to this park. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, why don't you speak to you know the, the discussions that you've had with Spa mm -hmm. at Village Grove and, and what we're looking at down there? Yes. Um, so the last meeting I <clears throat> came to you guys with a proposal from small management who uh, they wanted to mill and pick about a small section of grocery by our road levels or shop and split the bill list. So he went and got three quotes. The one, the lowest bid I brought to you guys, um, but I didn't have anything to compare it from our end. So mm -hmm. I got the uh, contractor who is. Um, the order of the, the Monroe County contract for this type of work. And they came through, and that's Champion Asphalt Maintenance, and uh, their quote was included in the pack. And, um, and Central Roadways just it's, it's a lot less than. That's yeah, amazing, yeah. the range. Um, so Jeff and I spoke earlier um, about having something official drawn up and having Spall sign off on it that way, you know, and I can be left on the hook saying, hey, please pay us, you know. So um, I think the next step, if everybody's on board, you know, they'll sort of pay, you know, 50% of the cost of the chamber, mm -hmm. the central roadways for it, it okay. happens down. Um, we need to have something drawn up, have Spall uh, sign off on it, and then move forward with paying the project. Mm -hmm. okay. I think the trustees have to approve the first. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then contingent be upon it. To an agreement yeah, the agreement. Yeah. And any any other questions about the contracts? Or? So we need to approve that tonight. We have three now. Is that what? Two two quotes. Did we have one last time, or is one of those? There was another one. So the 
essentially we have five quotes. Okay. Um, we have five now. We have, we have five. And the one you, that you're recommending is central? Central, it was the lowest. Mm -hmm. the, I'm sorry, four, four quotes. One of them is the contract that we made multiple four. Right. Um, but this is, yeah, um, the 50% of the costs of this will require the quotes. Thank you. Okay, that, that's helpful. So I'll entertain a motion to approve this contract uh, subject to uh, our attorney and, and also the tax input working on the agreement uh, for SPAL, with SPAL um, to be signed off on. With the Central Roadways? Yes, Central, Central Roadways. The contract with yep. Central Roadways Incorporated. So moved. I'll second. Roll call. Is that a clear enough job? Is that a clear enough motion? Yeah, I mean, yeah, subject to the contract. So. Yeah. Does the what, does the board wish to see the agreement as well? Yes. To so, approve it. I'd to, like like to see it. To, to, think. No, no, no. To approve it's what I meant. Oh, to to approve what you did. Will it, um, oh, yeah, I know you said they were trying to yeah. <clears throat> finish this up before the winter, and I know these asphalt companies are wrapping up work. Depending on where they get the asphalt from, um, Penfield, I believe, is scheduled to close down the first week of December. So we do have a little bit, a little bit of time. Yeah. But we don't want to wait till the last minute because if they already have uh, jobs booked, we might be pushed out. Okay. How about subject to, um, yeah. An agreement with Paul that he paid 50% of the costs. Yeah, actually that. And then I'll just. And then you can. I'll forward you copies of the okay. agreement. Okay. Yeah. Once it's signed, that. and then I'll complete the yeah. file. Okay. So as amended. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Trustee Lakin. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Great. Um, next. I know the spa is very eager to get this done. Yeah, so, sure. Um, I'll get a hold of uh, Sean Bill. Okay. Manager. Just find out who we set it up for. We can just leave it blank. Yeah. As long as they indicate they're from the spa, I have the authority to sign for a spa. Okay. Any, anything else, Seth? Uh, yes, the okay. quote from uh, White Clock and Caroline. I'm going to make a that. Caroline. I'm looking for all so the quotes for the, uh, the repainting of the clock, one is to leave it in place and paint over uh, the existing paint. Um, and the other is to dismantle the clock, take it down, take it to a shop, uh, have it sandblasted, repainted so it's fresh, new looking, um, replace the lenses, um, do slow the maintenance work on the signage uh, around the top of the clock, make sure everything's fixed the way it's supposed to. And set it back into place with clear coat on it. So, uh, yeah, it's like a UV protectant. Yeah, UV protectant. So, um, I think what not sure how long the first coat of paint lasts on that, but it, it should protect it very well. Um, yeah, and I also want to add, um, Bud and Peggy Frame donated the clock, and um, Peggy passed a while ago, and Bud, Bud passed last month. So, his children, his one of his sons has, has been in touch with me. Um, and they're interested in maybe helping us or, you know, maybe paying half of it or going in on this with us, um, just in honor of their parents and what, you know, what they donated, which I think is nice. So um, I'm going to be meeting with him on Tuesday, maybe sort, sort of sort through some things. Um, I think they are interested, um, just based on the phone call, really in a, in a nice restoration of the clock and, you know, that it's time to kind of. It's a short piece for the board Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, it's a high profile. Something looks a little especially that's going to start getting calls. So, um, <coughs> to polish it up, especially with PG coming through, I'm sure. Well, yeah. Great. We'll fluff and poof. Yep. Um, also, uh, can you speak, you know, because the, uh, about the electrical issue that happened with the clock. Yeah, the this clock has been going for the last yeah. few years. Um, I think back in 2018, I had to have a company come through and start replacing a lot of the connections that are at the ground because the lights, the banks of lights were, uh, were intermittently going out due to the failure of the connectors. Um, this time we're having issues with the clocks being uh, powered up because of the uh, breaker box that is set in a handle. Um, 
is meant for you know basement it's not really meant for being so it's eroding stuck. yeah the, the contacts are eroding okay. eroding you know, where is it falling apart so as part of the dot's project where this handhold is is right in the center of the curb ramp um at the bump out in front of pontillos and in order for that to be compliant the box the handhold itself would have to be cut down and the, the lid reset so there's already some work that has to be done there in which they have to pull that breaker box off to do this work as part of dot's project but while they're in there the electrician for cold springs um said that they can go and get a uh, more weatherproof, uh, more suitable mm -hmm. uh, breaker box to be able to mount back in there, make all these new connections to it because the breaker is obviously failing at this point. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but oh, yeah. I was off to the clock right now. I was tripped three times in the last two days, so uh, can't keep it going. Um, so while it's apart, repairing it, replacing it with better parts, putting it back together. Seems like the time to do it. Everything's yes. coming together. <clears throat> so outside of the manipulation of the handhold, the new box and glue connections will be made um, at the cost of the board. Not sure what that cost looks like yet. Right. Maybe a, a couple hours of work. Um, so, they may charge. so they would they would supply the box and do the work yes. and bill us back. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you'll keep us posted yes. on that. Or, yeah. Yeah. But and that's something that's going to happen. Um, by the end of this year, uh, I've been finishing yeah. up this work for the um, I mean, or is it something in the spring when they come back to do the lights and whatnot? Yeah, I don't think so because I think they want to get that uh, sorted out before winter okay. time. Okay. Yeah, so they're going to have to put that box down, which means they're going to have to disconnect that breaker box. So, um, and I'll verify all that stuff okay. with the, the contractor and the engineer um, to make sure that it will be because if it's going to be off, then they can replace the, the box sooner, mm -hmm. the, the breaker box sooner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully. Um, you know, I was thinking about these contracts. Um, I, as I said, I'm meeting with Bud, and what I can do is just, you know, let the board know the outcome of the meeting. Um, not Bud. I'm sorry, his son Scott. Um, so, what's the time frame for this? I mean, if we, if I can bring it back to the board for the next meeting. Yeah, they said that. Um, I, I just want to make sure we're. Within our parameters. The work should only take uh, about a month or so. Okay. This man, you know, taking it off the, the concrete as it's sitting on, bringing it back to the shop, stripping it down, repainting oh, yeah, it, no. and bringing it back up. Sure. Time. So it should be. Okay. Okay. So, if we, in other words, if we make the decision on the contracts, our next meeting is still okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that we were within the time frame. Anything else, staff? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a lot going. <laughs> I know, sorry. That was the longest part of this meeting tonight. <clears throat> um, our auction items that were sold. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But, uh, Great. That's what we got. A lot of the stuff was the 1962 um, diaphragm pump, trash pump. that had been set around and still fired right up. But, um, That's wild. Yeah, a lot of this stuff was just that kind of stuff. Um, and then an old salt in there was hanging. Yeah, the generator that sat on the trailer, um, yep. the 62 generator. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we got for the sale of all that stuff. That's great. great. You're going to clean up the yard and, you know, all yep. good. Make some room. Sure. Excellent. That's all I got. That's, <laughs> that's it? <laughs> great. Thank you. Okay. So the treasurer's report. We got, we got the bill pay and... Any questions? Okay. No. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. I'll entertain a motion, folks. We can make a motion to approve the vouchers. I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Lankin? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes? Okay. <laughs> Anything else, Brooklyn? Um, just a little update on Lou while she's not here speak highly of Dorothea because we have kind of come together and made a little process to where I created an Excel spreadsheet to kind of each streamline into our information. She tweaked one a little bit and kind of came together. And now, since she's been away, she left me some notes and things. And we pretty much gathered July and August already. Um, we just got in the um, statements for September. But with me having that spreadsheet now, I can just take in all the info that 
I can actually handle all throughout the week and now we're putting it into right into the Excel sheet. So we can't put it into the system mm -hmm. until this time, mm -hmm. but now we do have Excel sheets to where that info is just right there so we can streamline it right into the That's system. right. So you're capturing so, it. Yeah, I'm capturing it right now weekly compared to gathering it monthly. So yeah. we're three to write a moment. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. You guys have really been slugging away there. Anything else? Okay. Village clerk report. Anything, Kristen? No. Okay. She's been holding the fort. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> and thank you for holding the fort. <laughs> yeah, I, I also wanted to say thanks a lot, Kristen. I, I know uh, our, our um, clerk is, is out right now, but you've been doing a great job of communicating and, and uh, posting the different packet versions online and everything. That was very helpful. So thank you. I appreciate you. it. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Uh, let's see. So uh, first, first up then, uh, the open meetings law, uh, actually the resolution. Let me grab that. And take it. Take it. Oh, I, I, I don't want to lead off if someone else oh. is going to speak first, but um, I had a couple questions. Uh, maybe Jeff can answer. Um, I don't believe the intent of the state allowing municipalities to um, some flexibility with this open meetings law is that um, anyone would be fully remote all the time. And I don't think that's what the intent of um, this template that we've used either. Um, and the language of the current draft, it, there's still a little room for interpretation. I have, um, let's see, as set forth in the public bodies adopted, oh wait, that's us, which include disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, or any other. That is the whereas, which one is it? Oh shoot, I should have written that down. I just screenshot so it's in the, the resolution? One. It's in the resolution. It's in the resolution. Um, and it's the same, I was on NICOM's uh, guidance just. That's a little different than this resolution. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Ours does have, the disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, or any other significant or unexpected factor or event which precludes the members' physical right. attendance. Um, so it's the or any other significant unexpected factor or event mm -hmm. that to me leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Right. So I didn't know how much wiggle room we have um, to, to make that more restrictive or to, to clarify it a little bit. Um, I think we have the wiggle room we want. You think that's, well, I guess that's not a question for me. Well, would it be, would it make sense to have, you know, maybe direct Jeff to take a look at that and maybe look at it, any additional language or, you know, give us some thoughts on that. Because given that. Also, could, the table is to the next meeting. That's so true. Here, yeah, you know, yeah. we're missing two Because we're missing so. two people as well. Yeah. And this is. And I wasn't here. I don't know how deep I did watch the meeting, but I can't remember how deep you all got into this last time um, discussing it. So I apologize if I'm, I'm making you reiterate things um, that, that you just kind of didn't really get into it no, too I don't much that I heard. Okay. Because I think that's those are what the concerns that I'm mm -hmm. hearing from. I've, I've had a lot of people contact me, and you know the concerns are that someone would. Um, be able to not ever come in person. Yeah, I don't think that's the intention, right. but I know that's you, you want to make sure yeah. that it's reflecting yeah. that. Um, um, yeah. If, if I may, so I mean, we've got uh, just to address the the current um, uh, people at the table here. I mean, we're missing two members of the board tonight, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we usually have a five member board. We need three to operate. Um, so Trustee Lamp here did communicate with me and said that she was ill. Mm -hmm. Do we know where Trustee Keating is this evening? He has a board meeting conflict, I believe. So it seems like he's had a conflict at pretty much every meeting since June. And I don't, I think he's only been to part of one meeting in person since that time. And otherwise he's been uh, remote or hasn't attended the, the whole meeting or both. So if we're uh, asking our attorney to address, um, you know, the, the clauses where mm -hmm. um, we're able to be remote, I don't even know where to start because I don't, we're missing one of our members. So is well, that actually missing acceptable? Two. So why don't, why don't right, we do this and chronic. why don't, and why don't we, you know, move this to when we have the board, yeah. you know, I think that's probably real. I think you're making good points and it's realistic to, we should have. So do we want to hold on having 
Well, I still think, can we just we have Jeff at least investigate some additional language and then bring it back when we have the board? Let me look at, I don't have a copy of the actual law with me. And okay. I yeah. apologize for that. Oh, uh, yeah. I no, 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 I don't think the law is in there. Uh, yeah. I, I guess personally, before having, uh, you know, spending money to have our attorney draft something, I'd like to understand what the issues are. You know, why mm -hmm. can't we get a, a member of our, our board in person? I think those are two separate things. Well, to me, these are two separate yeah. things, and I don't, I don't know what was discussed at the last meeting. But to me, this is something that we didn't have before, um, that now the state is allowing us each municipality to decide if we want the flexibility when people are sick, when they're caring for people, when they're, you know, do, doing something else um, that takes them away from, from being able to come to Village Hall. Um, do we want our board members, um, our, you know, this board, but also then our volunteer boards to be able to um, join via video conferencing? Um, and that's, to me, that's separate than whatever's happening um, with this board right now, because I think this is a, a law that we didn't have before, and now we we can have a, some flexibility. And to me, that's a very human thing to do. Um, when you do, I agree, we need to all be here in person when we can be, but there are extenuating circumstances. When I was on the planning board, I had to go help my mom um, with surgery. I was working remotely. I couldn't call in. Um, yeah. You know, it would have been beneficial for, for, for that board to have more people around the table and for me to stay in the loop. So that's a discussion um, I'd like to have about the benefits of that. Um, and if we need to hold off, I'm totally fine with that. But to me, I see them mm -hmm. as two separate issues. You know, I, I just like to add that um, the discussion that came out of NICOM um, about this and um, was that, frankly, with COVID, um, I think that sort of really was the genesis of a lot of this for so many municipalities who really made the investment into uh, technology and we're also really looking at upgrading our technology here for our meetings as well and I think we really should. Um, so these investments have been made by a number of municipalities and I think really the recognition was that you know the municipalities are set up for this. It, it actually um, enables board, board members to participate. Say for example if they test positive for COVID but they don't have any symptoms but they really can't come in they still would want to participate in the meeting, at least through video conferencing. And I think this the this model law and, the, and now the resolution as well really came out of that and really the recognition that we're, we're kind of doing things differently. And this really just widens really the opportunities for board members to participate. That was the part of the discussion that at least that I was hearing as well. And I know a number of other municipalities already in the county are looking at this. And Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't didn't the HPB already pass their resolution to mm -hmm. enable this? So we've already had one of our volunteer boards um, <coughs> enable this um, for their board members as well. So I agree with Renee. I mean, I think, you know, I, I understand, you know, you, you're trying to address a, a, another issue as well, but I think this is sort of separate from that. You know, this is something that I do think we really should look at, you know, because um, we also have been talking about for a while upgrading our technology here. And that's part and parcel. Do we that. have a deadline on this? Or like we could, if we don't do anything, it just, we can't have video conferencing yeah, capabilities. No yeah, so there's no we can hurry. Least, it's um, not for our, Okay. There's no I mean, my, my thought would be, we uh, the only thing I've done is forward to you proposed resolution, which could be turned into a local law. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, procedures suggested by the Committee on Open Government, I've not really looked at the actual law that enables this to decide or be able to advise you whether or not how, how far you can vary from this stuff. Okay. And that might be a good thing to know for your discussions. Yeah. I do, um, I, I appreciate that. I guess um, other than that one specific concern, uh, I do have several other concerns about remote meetings for our board. I, I am on remote meetings every day. I run a company remotely. Um, and I'm not against remote meetings in general, but um, that's when everybody is kind of aligned and, and there's a lot of trust and, and cohesion in the organization. I don't know if that's right for us right now. 
um, I think there's a, a certain benefit to, to being in person. Um, but there, there are other issues we can go into later. I guess I'm wondering if, um, I think we've gotten some input from the public. We might have more input uh, from the people here. I'm wondering if we just want to open that up and get that on the record. Well, I, I'm thinking that we should actually have the, the whole board here to hear the comments from the public. And let's just move it. We'll move just it take, the, yes, we don't do anything until yeah. the next meeting. We and don't then, even have And then we can hear, everybody can hear it, you know. I think that's... Well, would we, so we would roll the, I know we've gotten some public comments. We would roll those to the next yeah. meeting. Uh, maybe yeah. we can put those in the packet so that people can see them. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, since we've got a, uh, we have received some input, I, I don't know what the best way is yeah, to share I, this so we can broaden this conversation. Sure. Yeah, I'm not against hearing comments either if you yeah. want to do it now too. Well, I mean, I think we've all agreed that we, you know, we, we're going to move it forward. You know, we have other items on the agenda. I just okay. assume well, I, I have the whole, we don't have Lily here, we don't have Dan here. I'd like to have the full board hear comments as well. I, I and you made a good point in the beginning, say we're missing two members. And I think, you know, putting it on the next agenda or whatever. And there's no hurry. I'm there's hearing, no, there's, there's no, no deadline. deadline. Okay. I, I just think it's a practical matter that yeah. that makes right sense. Now, then everybody can weigh in. Right now, you cannot do it. That's correct. Well, because we would have to send it to uh, a public hearing at the very least, right? To, or is there another? You have to pass a local law. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So so uh, let's take all the other thing right now. But certainly, it's up for discussion. I, you know, as to the public comments that we've received, they're already in the record anyway. Yeah. Right? Whether or wants them posted on the agenda, it's up to the board. Yeah. You, I'm sorry, you're going to make a motion? I was going to say we can take that. I'll make a motion to table it. Would we have to have a motion for that or not really? I, I would like to, if, if there are comments from uh, the public, either online or in the room, I'd, I'd like to hear those since we're all together and on the topic right now. Sure, before sure. We... let's do it. It was on the Let's agenda that people came to okay. yep. yeah. Everybody came. <laughs> sure. So, any comments from the public? Hi, Dave Marshall again, 67 South Main. I just had two quick uh, questions. One, were you tabling it to the extent such that Jeff was doing no work until the next conversation, or tabling it with the intent for Jeff to do work prior to the next conversation? I don't think we got that far. I think we were just tabling. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then the second one was just. If I can provide my answer to what think, I think ought to happen. So I, think, I think for this board to have an intelligent conversation about this, they ought to know the parameters of where they could go and not go. Okay. How restrictive we could get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And okay. you brought that up earlier. So. so one of the questions, and this just has, this comes from the resolution. It says, and Renee, you read it. Um, that they could choose not to be physically present at any such meeting locations due to extraordinary circumstance. And then it goes on and gives some examples like disability, illness, and caregiving. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, if you look up what extraordinary circumstances uh, means and how you could um, interpret that, in fact, examples online of how to interpret extraordinary circumstances would be something as simple as a um, special meeting of the board to suggest it doesn't have to be related to disability, illness, caregiving, or otherwise. Just the simple fact that an extraordinary circumstance is a special meeting called by the board would permit remote attendance based on how the law is crafted. So one of the things you could consider is limitations on the frequency of use and then fall back on some standard which is already in place where you have to have a you know, forum in public. So for example, somebody could maybe use this one, two times a year rather than anything more than that. And that speaks to Jeff any work that you might do in terms of how to limit it. What the scope would be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to be clear, because I guess Dr. was not clear, I would not be doing any specific things one way or the other. I would just, my thought is to compare what the, what the actual legislation mm -hmm. allows and then advise the board as to where for instance your parameter that you just suggested could be could it be included or not and also part of the, and part of this resolution is that there has to be a quorum of three still present yeah, yeah. and as a member of the good. public just to express my opinion i do think that there is considerable value to seeing your representatives 
in front of you on a regular basis, how they interact, how they conduct business with the public. And when online, the ability to have the periphery be whoever it may be, the ability to go on mute, off mute, have conversations. I know you have to be physically there, but you can be on mute and everything can be going on around you while you're there. It's not quite the same as five people in a room talking to open government and open meetings as expected as a, a constituent. Yep. Just to be clear, yep. the three person quorum is that three people are available at any location mm -hmm. to the public. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you each could all be in your homes, provided the public can come into your homes. Yeah. yeah. And then it is you know, then the meeting can function. Wow. <laughs> so I wonder if we have wiggle room there too to, to, to write where the quorum some details about you got to be careful, you know, because, okay. the, because the, the state has really preempted this area of the law, and that's one of my concerns, is how, how much can you change this thing? Okay. Could you require a quorum to be in one location? You know, that's, that's, what I would say. That's, that's what I think where he's going, yeah. you know, how do we... we know. Know. My, my guess that. is that given that they've preempted how public meetings must happen to mess around with those kind of provisions probably wouldn't pass much time. So it's either up or down kind of thing. Yes, Bob. Sure. Robert Corby, Southern Washington Avenue. Um, I'm actually opposed to this provision. Um, I think it's, it represents a giant step backwards for those government. Um, the New York State Office for Open Meetings has been in place for decades. And it was put in place because problems in local and state government with collusion, uh, side conversations, decisions being made outside the legal meeting process. Uh, the standards that have been in place for decades have been put there for good reason and they work well. Um, in the 28 years while I was on the board, we always worked around those standards. There were meetings where I was remote and they were critical meetings that happened because of 75 on row where I, I called in and gave information but was unable to participate in the voters of deliberation. I think the previous standard of having when someone does have to call remotely, um, have them in a public place that protects the public's assurance that there isn't a special interest or a side conversation happening that the public cannot witness. The value of village government is our access to you. It's somewhat different from the Preservation Board and the Planning Board, which are reviewing technical issues. You really here are representing us and our right to have access to the full extent of the conversations and the deliberation occurs is, is the underlying great value of those government. So I ask you to consider that carefully. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your input. Um, the resolution that is, is before us in our packet, that was provided to us by who wrote that? What was the entity? Committee on Open Government. So it was the Committee on Open Government that actually wrote the resolution. Okay. That's helpful too. Um, any other comments? Can we move on here? So you were starting to make a motion. We listened to some comments. Um, do we I think want at this point you would continue it until next time. Just continue just make, it, I guess. Maybe an agenda item for next time. Okay. And no, do we want to give motion. do we want to give Jeff any direction in terms of looking at the parameters of, of I mean one of the questions that Dave raised is yeah. can you mess around with it to the extent that all three of you have to be in one place? I mean I'd like you to take you know, a look at that. I mean I think those are those are important considerations if, if this is being looked at. Personally, I, with, with the concerns on this specific board and with the concerns that we've heard from constituents and my own concerns about transparency and about, um, you know, making us, uh, making some or all of us virtual, um, you know, we, we are the people that our constituents uh, elected, not the person that we're having a conversation with Slack on, not the person who's sitting next to us in, in a room who's off camera. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, there may be legal issues that we need to work out, um, but there could be case law too. You know, this is a relatively new area of law and we could be doing this research and then six months from now, there's a new case related to open meetings law and, and the situation changes. I feel like we can take advantage of the, um, of being in public. Um, and this is not an urgent situation to address. 
And I would just defer it uh, for at least six months or so and, and then bring it up again, rather than spending money and, and having the landscape change when we're halfway through. I, I appreciate that input. I think, um, you know, we are looking at, and we've been talking, as, as you all know, um, about upgrading the technology in this meeting room, and that would include, you know, having the smart screens. So any, um, if there were a trustee that had, you know, significant circumstances where they couldn't be here in person, um, they actually would visually be here on the screen. And so we would not only hear their voice, we'd be able to see them and interact with them, um, which is quite different from what we have, have been sort of, you know, duct tape and super glue here with our meetings, um, you know, going through COVID. So um, again, um, I think I think we should table it for now till maybe the next meeting, get some more information. And, and I'd like to move forward at least with, with looking at it because I, I think Renee made a good point. The issues maybe that have been raised regarding, you know, trustees attendance or not. Um, I think this is actually separate. This is really um, a consideration that actually municipalities across the entire state are looking at. You know, this isn't just a one of for us. So um, I just would like to bear that in mind as we move forward. And there's no, we heard from Jeff, there's no urgency. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm fine waiting. And if we yeah. want to not have Jeff do anything, I'm fine with that too. It doesn't sound like we've on that anyway. So. Yeah, well, we can wait till we have a full board. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do that. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. good with that? All right. Wait till we have a full board. Okay. Next up, special permit application for chain place. Anybody here? I think it just has for a public hearing. Yeah, I didn't know if anybody want, you know, was going to say anything about it. Okay. So this is, um, is this for the salon? Darling yes. Aesthetics. Yeah, this, this really, this, I would entertain a motion then to move this to public hearing unless somebody has additional questions regarding the application. Uh, I'll make a motion to move uh, the for Shane Place uh, application to a public hearing. Do we have a date? Yeah, when that Kristen's going to come up with a November date. 10th. <laughs> November 10th. She's November 10th. She's on it. Right. Okay. Public hearing on November 10th, the time? 7. 7. Are we always at 7 p.m.? Pretty much. I should yeah. know that yeah, by now. Seven. Okay, 7 p.m. <laughs> Set it for whenever you want. Okay. Well, then we kind of make it 7. Okay, so yeah. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a I'll second? second? Okay. Roll call, please. Trustee Lake it? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> okay, next up, the non-municipal permit application amendment. Um, this is for candlelight night. I think I think it's just they wanted to add a band down at Northfield Common. Yeah, they I wanted to add a band in front of Northfield Music. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and it'll be facing down towards Pittsburgh Lumber, not back towards the residents. Okay. I've got just a, a small piece of information on that too. I was on the uh, the meeting with the Chamber of Commerce this morning mm -hmm. as the liaison to the Chamber, and they said that um, they will not be doing fireworks as they have in previous yeah. years because I guess that disturbed the animals yes. uh, that are involved. So um, this is kind of in a substitution of the fireworks. Uh -huh. um, there's there's something that'll be done uh, with the band is, is what they're thinking. And the band will be done by eight o'clock. Uh, yeah. Way way before the noise you know, time frame yeah. for the village. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about the fireworks here. I know, I didn't even think about it. Take care, Dave. Um, okay. I'll make a motion a, to oh. approve the uh, the amended application. Oh. Um, we need to. Gotcha. Is it within, are we 45 days away from that? Ah. It's 12 6. It's this is the December 6th. Uh, um, yeah. We're good. We're good. So, no. Yeah, right. We're going to you'd like to think. I know it's going to be, it's going to happen before you know it, right? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Trustee Lakin? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, we're going to hear the band. Okay, next up, we have um, some public hearings this evening. <clears throat> evening, excuse me. Uh, the first one up is a short term retail permit for 44 North Main Street. Does the board have any questions about this? Nothing has changed, correct? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing that he's been doing for yeah. a long time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Second. Okay. 
Okay, Trusty Lakin. Aye. Trusty Setzer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Uh, aye. And uh, for the record, this is um, a, a short-term retail permit to sell the Christmas trees at the dairy, which is a tradition in the village. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? I'm hearing crickets. Okay. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, I'll, I'll second, I mean. <laughs> okay, roll. Trustee Lakin. Aye. Trustee Spetzer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. I'll entertain another motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short term retail business permit uh, as presented. I'll second. Roll call, please. Yeah. Are all the conditions of the application, or should we say, same conditions as last year? Uh, with, um, I believe all the conditions are, are in here, but um, they are. Uh, this is to approve the short term retail business uh, application uh, as it has been done in previous years. Or as presented now. Is there and as presented. <laughs> there we go. We're covering. Yeah. We're belt suspenders at this point, I think. Okay. Trustee Lankett. Aye. Trustee Steps. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Next up is a special permit at 5 South Main Street. Uh, this is for um, a restaurant. Is there anybody? Hi. Hi. Come on up. Sure, sure. We have a chair right yes, here. Yeah. We have a chair right here. Yeah. We're good. Give me my oh, is that your desk? I didn't even know. Uh, I didn't see no, no, no. I'm joking. Who knew? Okay, you now have a chair. I may stick them on my tables. For I know. Seat. Thank you for How are you? How are you guys? Good, good. And your name, please? Okay. My name is Haywa Shri. Nice to meet you. Okay, so Thanks. tell us what you're doing. Um, we're trying to open a restaurant in five something. It used to be a restaurant, but we are just changing that name and. Mm -hmm. We're doing different food, so we're hoping to set the um, peaceful community. Okay. And let's see, I'm just, I, we've all had a chance, you know, to look at the permit. I didn't know if, if the board had any questions um, for you. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, really. Yeah, yeah. As before. Same function, just different menu. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. And I mean, I don't have any questions. Renee, Justin, anything from you? I, don't Renee, have anything. Uh, no, I, don't I mean, it seems pretty, no. yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah. So I can entertain a motion from somebody. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, special permit application as presented. Do we have to open up? We forgot to open. Uh, oh, I yes. forgot to open. Up. <laughs> okay, I'll make See, I'm so excited. <laughs> Wait, I'm hungry. If, if no one seconds your motion, it just. Dies, yeah. right? So We're done, yeah. Come, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll make a motion to open the public, public hearing. hearing. Thank you. I'll second that. Good one. Trustee Lincoln? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Okay. Anyone wishing to speak? Anybody online? Okay. Nothing there. Okay. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. <laughs> Roll call. Trustee Lincoln? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passed. Okay, there's another motion that we could have. Okay. Uh, now I'll make a motion to approve the special permit as presented in the packet. Aye. Okay. For so to include the conditions from the previous special mm -hmm. permit for this property. Steve, are they running it essentially the same? I couldn't quite hear you. Conditions, should we? Should we include in that motion the conditions imposed for the previous special permit? For our, I mean, if you want to state it that way. Because I don't think the application was all that okay. robust. Right. Yeah. In, in terms of seating and, and uh, those those types of things, right? Yeah. That's not changing. Conditions um, from previous permit? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, as amended. I'll second. We'll call Trustee Lankin. Aye. Trustee Spencer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. I'm awesome. Awesome. When, are you, when are you interested in opening? Uh, we will plan to open in November 1st, maybe. Great. Great. Oh, good. So you'll be open for candlelight night, too. Yeah. Oh, you'll get a lot of business. Thank you. Wonderful. All the best to you. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, Next up, and this is just really more just a, a, the budget committee um, that uh, we just we talked about last time. So it's you and Dorothea and Zach and me. And so Dorothea is going to be back uh, from vacation, uh, I think Monday. 
uh, hopefully well rested. So what we'll do, I think she'll start to set up dates. You know, we'll okay. just pull the room here and start to you know really drill down and get get some good planning going here. Okay, Great. so it's, this is really just an update for everybody. Um, so next up, LWRP code update. Um, I can kick this off or anybody else. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shall I go ahead? Um, so uh, thank you to our attorney for um, providing a, a couple of different options to um, uh, clean up the LWRP code. Um, and basically the idea of this cleanup is uh, primarily to ensure that the jurisdiction for LWRP review um, remains in front of a, a single board, which is the, the planning board uh, that has traditionally had um, the capacity to review uh, applications pursuant to the um, LWRP policies that we have in place. Um, and so there are also a couple of changes I noticed, Jeff, uh, related to public hearing, I think. Was that the other cleanup item in here that there was? Um... Uh, that was not my suggestion. Uh... Oh, okay. Maybe I, I confused. So uh, let me, um, uh, so the, the couple of different options, if, if I might, Jeff, in, in this, uh, this code here. Um, <laughs> There, there were a couple of options, and this is related to chapter 121 of our code. Um, uh, there was an option in, uh, let's see, sections D and E. Is it OD? Yeah, uh, where our attorney made a, a couple of different uh, proposals there. And one of them uh, put the review authority or, or gave the um, ability or the necessity of the um, Historic Preservation Board to make a recommendation. Um, Jeff, I wondered if you wanted to, to speak to that since that wasn't yeah, really yeah. yeah, it seemed to me that, seems to me that the HPB has expertise in areas that the planning board might not, and that some of the LWRP um, standards really speak to those areas where the HPB has more mm -hmm. or, or better authority, not authority, better, better knowledge and experience. Um, and they, that would only be a, a, a response, sort of an advice and recommendation sort of thing, not a binding. Mm -hmm. it, would be, it, would be kin it would be like their like the authority that the HPB has anyway. Yeah. Advisor, right. Yes. So they, they, they actually can do that without invitation. Right. I, I guess that's what I was thinking. I, um, I don't have too strong of an opinion about either way of fixing this. It seems like all the different options um, fix the main problem that we, that we have with the code right now. Um, I guess what I was thinking is that since the Historic Preservation Board does already have the ability to provide a recommendation, um, to me, I was a little bit worried that if we tell them that any additional required information is submitted, um, I wondered if that left us open to somebody saying, well, they didn't submit any input by the timeline and, and challenging a determination on that basis. So if it essentially added some complexity. So adding a requirement, the, whereas right now it's a... It's always an option. It's, yeah, it's mm -hmm. an option. Um, so I so probably a question for Jeff. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, Jeff's thinking about it. Yeah. You're the hamsters in the room. Because if we don't ha have it laid out as a. As well, a you could always ask them to get it back to you in the time frame that fits. Let's see. Sixty days would under under the, the alternative in E, mm -hmm. the consistency determine or the, the, the time frame requirement mm -hmm. doesn't start running until the HPB gets back to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an E. Yeah. So I, I guess. With with that, um, I would just go the simpler path, I guess. Right now, I think that um, you know, to me, it's it's really just uh, all these things might fix the problem, but I would prefer a, a kind of simpler approach that um, uh, you know leaves the the current ability for the HPD to advise uh, in its current role and and um, 
just do the minimal thing that will get the code improved. If we don't specifically call it out like the first option, mm -hmm. um, it would work the same as it's currently working with the option to. Except the HPV may not really know that it's going on. I was going to say, this is to me more transparent. I mean, that I, I, I don't really can be I mean, part of the process. Is entirely the board's call. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I was really thinking more of the issue mm -hmm. of when the HPV doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's not such mm -hmm. a high profile. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is most of the time. It's yeah. not usually those high profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, this is totally up to the board. Yeah, I would, I would like to see something. I think it would be great to see something like where there's a, um, and it wouldn't be our place to, to tell them to do this, but the planning board could say, well, we always notice the HPV whenever we've got an multiple URP review, you know, and, and they would weigh in. Well, you could do that in this statute. In, in the statute, yeah, I guess that would be. The requirement to notify? Yeah, make it part of the procedure. Yeah. But then if it doesn't yeah, you run into the same time you run into the same time frame problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean I guess that they know if they get a completed application and they get notice of the complete application and they're not back to the planning board within 60 days it's on them anyway. Right. Get notice. Planning board's got to make a decision or have a public hearing. In 60 days, mm -hmm. HPV doesn't go back to them. Doesn't go back. Yeah, they may or may not respond. Actually, yeah. so that's with the HPV clause in there. You're saying you're yeah. in the notice, and, yeah. and then they just don't respond, and then that's a that's on them. Right? Yeah, they missed the boat after after being notified. Or they've chosen not to respond. Right. That they don't feel the need to weigh in. Yeah, no courtesy but, would yeah. say we have no response. You know, yeah. send back and say they won't respond. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that too, as long as you're assuring us that there's nothing, you know, if they don't respond, um, then it wouldn't uh, uh, overturn the decision. Yeah, always. <laughs> oh, but, but I think that's, well, you can, the language can structure it, that they have the opportunity within the time frame to respond or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. pretty common. Yeah. What you want to say? Yeah. Right. Well, what I would like to do is, is solve the immediate issue in front of us in the simplest way possible and, and move this forward. So I guess if we're um, talking about needing to, to change the code even further, um, I... you got to make a choice anyway. Because yeah. it's all drafted in the alternative. Mm -hmm. So oh. we can't move anything to public hearing even though we've got this drafted in the... Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, we have a the code workshop coming up November fourth. So why don't we, you know, I mean, that's just in a few weeks, and we can address address things then. To answer the question, though, you could say, you know, with with uh, moving a public hearing with the first alternative for blah 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 blah, mm -hmm. and we're moving to public hearing. Uh, with the with the second alternative in E, mm -hmm. sort of okay. Okay. column A, yeah, column A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you wanted to move it from here, mm -hmm. there would be a way to do that. Mm -hmm. is, um, is there any advantage to um, doing this separately when we're like, if we're having the code workshop on the fourth? And we already make some decisions around this. Wouldn't we want to just have the hearing all at once? Because this will put them on two separate dates then, correct? So then we'll have one minor code update, this one. And then we're going to have another batch of whatever we're doing on November 4th. Um, and they'll be separately. And they're going to probably be filed together anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm totally fine with making some decisions tonight. I just wonder if it makes more sense to have the hearing on everything at, at once. Um, but I. Um, I will okay. hand it back to you to answer that. Um, um, about that. Well, let, let's um, let's try to just push a little bit further about the the options, um, the two options in front in front of us. So okay. Are we um, in in terms of the HPB mandatory referral or or not? Are there strong opinions on on that? I mean, I guess I don't. I would tend to go simpler and and just uh, 
um, and, and not add additional requirements to the code since I, I feel like the, the boards are independent and um, you know there's already a public hearing for the LWRP so yeah um, I would I would guess I would want to hear from the do, they, do, do we know what the historic preservation board would want would they want a yeah, mandatory yeah. Um, notification mm -hmm. I mean I think that's also part of what the workshop could bring out you know that we could have this additional discussion mm -hmm. um, and you know have this, have HPB weigh in and other boards members of the public mm -hmm. the other two board members you know um, you know to kind of drill down on that a little bit is there I'm just curious there's so there's nothing in um, our code or other laws that would require a notice to our other boards anyway if we're passing you know if we're doing something impactful in the LWRP overlay district yeah, yeah. Well, it seems like there should be. Oh, it's been a courtesy. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like this is the yeah. only. This is the directive document. The LWRP itself is sort of a mm -hmm. mission statement, I guess you would say. It's more like a comp plan than legislation. Mm -hmm. So if it's not in here, it's not around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do have a public um, question comment. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, it's Peggy Carabaris, 81 South Maine. Would you please clarify when in the application process the LWRP review should take place before final site plan approval, before review by the HPB? That's a question. It, it takes place before any, any other approvals can happen. There has to be an LWRP consistencies rule. And that was the process, the most recent process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in doing this, we're adding another requirement for the for the <laughs> for whoever's assisting the planning board and for the planning board chair. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's a downside or not. I mean, I think it's a good idea to always notify the other boards when yeah. something like this is happening. Whether I don't know what the downside is to yeah, having it codified like this. It's interesting just because it hasn't sort of been codified or you know put, put down somewhere it doesn't mean that it shouldn't or that we yeah. shouldn't really look at it you know this this again i think is an opportunity you know you brought this up you know um it's a good good thing to look at for sure okay yeah so i don't have strong feelings i would probably want to know whether the plan or the um, mm -hmm. historic yeah. preservation yeah. board would want it in the code so that's laid out like that because then does that leave it open to if you if somewhere in the process that doesn't happen or somehow it gets lost in the, the process. Mm -hmm. Or if they aren't notified. Yeah. yeah. Right. And do we want the, the planning board's determination possibly contingent on, on notice of, of the other boards? Um, right. Maybe it's not a big deal. Well, all of the RP is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a lot of them occur. We don't do a lot of um, yeah, reviews. Well, I, I, with that board, so I don't yeah. know how many it is, but it's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. from that perspective, mm -hmm. okay. getting it right, yeah, is important. It's important. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that giving the HPV notice is getting it right. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm saying that following the procedure. The LWRP, whatever that is, mm -hmm. getting that right is important. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that too. Well, then perhaps what we can do is this. Um, we actually ask both boards um, because we're also, you know, conditioning the. Right. We're um, putting more work on for the. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. So I, I would just uh, uh, ask if, if possibly our, our uh, deputy clerk could could just ask both boards for their thoughts on on that um, if if they want to be. Uh, notified of um, LWRP review. Um, and let them know also the workshop on November 4th too. It's mm -hmm. November 3rd. Third. Oh, November 3rd. Oh, you can see the fourth. Yes. And I have something else on the 4th I'm thinking about, so the 3rd. Okay. I don't know, I just went, you said whatever. Uh, yeah, don't, don't listen to me, I have I no credibility. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Kristen, maybe you could just forward them these these code samples and, and say we're thinking of, of having a mandatory notice to the HPB um, on LWRP review and wanted to get your thoughts. We're going to talk about this on November 3rd. Third, thank you. Yeah, November 3rd. Sorry, I think I started the rumor. I don't remember. Actually, there's some really. 
There's three the... alternatives. There are two alternatives you're talking about. Three alternatives. One is um, building in their um, report and recommendation or just setting a notice or not doing anything. Right. So that's the three options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. That sounds, sounds like a plan on the third. Thank you. Then a lot more input to have all the facts in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, so this is taking a couple of passes on, on this code, but I, I think uh, hopefully we'll get it right and we'll, we'll batch with the rest of the code and, yeah. and um, get it done. Thank you. Great. Thanks Great. for your work. Justin. Thank you. Thank you okay. So next up, um, member items. Anybody have anything? Mine was already yeah. exact <laughs> covered. I was going to ask about the trees and the yeah. paving. Okay. Right. I do not have any member yeah. items. I don't really have anything. Zach, do you have a, you have a member item? <laughs> so you want us to leave, so I want to carry this out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, just to put the idea back in the board's head, uh, the consideration of hiring Peter uh, Bessie, for example. Yeah. He's right now. Um, Spoken out. Yeah, so um, as soon as possible, if possible, other people. Okay. Yeah. Let's link. We should add to the agenda. Yeah, and I think I think we can add it to the agenda next next time, um, because I know when Dorothea comes back, she's going to run some more numbers. You know, make sure we're still in. You know, doing okay. Yeah, that we don't need to print money. So that would be two yeah. weeks from now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Two weeks from now. Okay, so yeah. the twenty twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Yeah. Oh, I got that date right. Yeah. Twenty seventh. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are there any other comments online or anything? Okay. All right. Any other public comment? Anything? We're good. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Lakin. Aye. Trustee Sessler. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Thanks, everybody. And it's five after two. I know. It